Hello everyone and welcome back to the garage and today we're talking about tools specifically I'm gonna take you on a tour through my toolboxes and just take a look at everything that I use on a regular basis how I keep it organized and see if it's something that might help you before we get into the toolboxes let me just show you this pegboard that I have in the back of all of my introduction shots now I don't love pegboard for tools that I use all the time but man, it looks good when you get things organized in the right way up there. And it can be really useful for stuff near the workbench or things that I need to grab once in a while, like an impact. When you have these nice big uh, impact and drill holders, those work really well. And I can keep these. These are the lug sockets. But these, these are not great. I don't love them but they're okay but yeah the pegboard I really just keep as a kind of a cool visual I don't recommend it for uh, for daily use tools it just becomes frustrating after a while let's get on to the toolboxes so here is my toolboxes this is my my stack my set whatever you want to call it these are the four toolboxes that make up most of my hand tool store it this top red one is an older box i don't know if it's a craftsman or whatever it doesn't really matter to me the brand of the toolbox is much less important than it being a good usable size uh, and that it works in the top see it used to be silver at some point and i painted it red uh, we have flashlights these are all just my sort of miscellaneous hand tools that I I know that I use but they're kind of for random things you know like spark plug cleaners and wheel sockets trim piece removal tools I love all the uh, squeezy claw tools releases this is for doing the uh, control arm adjustments on the Jeep this custom made adjustable wrench that I used one time for a, uh, I think it was a fan nut on a BMW but now I have it and it stays here and then all of my drivers these are in the Ulsa tools driver organizer this is a pretty cool thing I like it now you don't tip it upside down the magnets aren't strong enough for that these will fall out but for just keeping them ready to use in the toolbox it's really nice and it is magnetic on the bottom so it holds them in there it stays in the drawer and then pulling the bits out is really easy you can see I use labels I have a, a p-touch pro label maker I never thought I would be one of the label maker people but I am and I love it so I kind of just keep little notes for myself on what's where and it also helps me if uh, someone's helping me out working on a car or working in the garage I can just tell them uh, you know it's in this box and then look for that label so miscellaneous uh, toolbox stuff these are the dividers for the Kennedy box some of the other Ernst socket holders and labels and just extra things bike tools for working on bike cycles uh, this little chain tool and this is my small grease gun of course this can be for other things but I got it for bikes so it lives in bike tools chisels I don't do a lot with chisels but I have some chisels and when you need a chisel you need a chisel so I have some cold chisels and banging things I, I guess these are for wood like I said I don't do a lot with chisels uh, but sometimes you just need one uh, I also have this punch this is an old Harbor Freight socket that has become a, a little anvil or a driver if you need it and this is a, a railroad spike which also serves as a punch or a chisel when you need it you need to hit something hard railroad spike is awesome at that screwdrivers and picks exactly what it sounds like now I had a ton of screwdrivers before and it was really hard for me to narrow down what I was actually using and what I didn't really need at all but look we have some of the small precision tool drivers we have this nice old-school set that's a uh, Deltacom that I think I found in a car that we were 
flipping when I was cleaning it out. Um, this is a really cool old school like mechanic set. Like you, I don't have a pocket, but if I had a shirt pocket, you keep that in your shirt pocket just to pull it out and work on things. Uh, you know, and then like yeah, big big flat, big Phillips, twisty end, universal. I've got two sets of picks. That kind of just happens. I bought these while we were out uh, on the road. We had to do a, a fix on a truck while we were on vacation. And so then they came home and they're pretty good. And it's nice to have a variety of picks. Sometimes you need two picks on the same thing. Another little precision screwdriver set. And then you got your stubbies, Phillips, flats of various sizes. This is probably the one that I love the most, an old Ace Pro Series. This is great for prying and also using as an actual screwdriver. It's just a good size good handle uh, but none of these are terribly expensive and if they were I promise you I did not get them new this drawer is cleaning brushes just because I needed a good place for the cleaning brushes you know you're scrubbing uh, manifolds or bolts or whatever we got some nylon we got some brass we got some steel we got some toothbrushes the the dentist office always gives you a cheap little toothbrush Throw it in your box. Use it for something. Also brush your teeth. And I have the wire wheel. Cheek poker, if you will. Just a little driver size one. And pliers and snips is the last one for this box. Ooh, look at that. Now, this is the uh, Ernst plier organizer set. I had to do a lot of measurements to make sure that it was that the drawer was going to be deep enough for it to fit and it just clears but i love this so much i am able to fit so much more in this drawer because of these organizers and, and i really had to do a lot of paring down of my pliers i had so many pliers and i really wasn't using hardly any of them so i tried to narrow it down to just the stuff that i could remember using you know in the last year or so and then once those were in, I, I sort of picked and choose. Okay, well, I have a few slots left. Let me see what I can can still put in there. So you've got, you know, adjustable. Uh, I guess those are channel locks. I don't know. I really like these. Of course, now I'm having trouble getting it out. I really like these uh, adjustable ones from Husky. I had another set from Lowe's, the Cobalts, and they just didn't grip very strong. They were good adjustables, but once you got into the, the grip, they didn't hold. Those hold really well. I've got three different sizes of traditional vice grips, needle nose vice grips, a couple of these old school straight pliers, and then the nice thing is some of these will, will hold uh, two, like these little needle nose. These Nipex were a, a Christmas gift to myself. These are flush cuts, and I only use them on zip ties. It was really... Uh, extravagant to buy this to only snip zip ties but I love it so much uh, hose clamp pliers I buy cheap ones of these if it's a tool that I just want to try out I don't buy a fancy version of it I buy the cheapest one that I can find uh, that has you know not a whole bunch of junk reviews on on Amazon or other websites and I use those and if it seems like a tool that's going to be beneficial to me when it breaks or doesn't perform, then I move up to a more expensive version. Same with these snap ring pliers. They were cheap, but they have continued to work. I have these uh, different needle nose with the little holes on them. Those are really good for pulling off hoses, uh, like vacuum lines when you're working under the hood. Uh, these are the first pair of bent extended needle nose that I ever got and they have proved super useful. I inherited these from some toolbox or something. These are old channel lock diagonal cutters. They cut everything that I need them to. I love these so much. And these from Vice Grips, these are excellent. They have that nice little articulated section in the middle and uh, man these are fantastic if you need to get down in somewhere and reach and they're easy to to articulate with one hand so good so good okay so that is it for the top box now let's move 
to the Craftsman. Quick little sticker tour here. Gotta have stickers on your toolbox. And as you can see, we continue with the labels. This one doesn't have a label yet. I need to make a label for it. Random big stuff. Real quick about labels. Labels are for you to know what's in a drawer. Use whatever wording you want on there so long as it helps you know uh, what's in that drawer uh, or where if you get a new thing, that's a good reminder to know like, hey, this is a, a thing that does this, probably go in this drawer and keep it. And the labels are nice too because if you decide you want to change it, you just peel them off and make new ones. But labels are for you. Don't feel obligated to use somebody else's uh, verbiage for what you want to call the stuff in your drawer. So, pry bars and cutters, exactly what it sounds like. These big giant flathead screwdrivers are pry bars. I have never used them as screwdrivers. I don't even know what I would use this gigantic Phillips head screwdriver for, but it's pretty cool. Another pry bar, traditional crowbar, and then all the cutters. We have some box knives. We have other kinds of box knives. We have tin snips. We have scissors. You need scissors in the garage because you don't want to get in trouble for taking your wife's scissors or your mom's scissors from inside. They have good scissors. Do not use their good scissors on anything in the garage. Have your own garage scissors. It's like seven bucks for two pair in there and then throw another pair in the junk drawer inside. And then we also have these uh, PVC pipe cutters and they're also great for cutting hoses uh, you'd be amazed how unstraight your cuts are with a box knife or a razor blade once you use these Whew, so good automotive electrical tools is exactly what it sounds like I got the old uh, solo starter here uh, luckily I have not had to use it in a, in a long time but if I need to it's there. Uh, this is my latest purchase, the Vehicle Super Probe KM10. Uh, this is a pretty cool tool. I'm looking forward to using it on the uh, E34 station wagon, fixing the rear glass release. Timing light. Most of the stuff we work on now doesn't need a timing light, but it's a good diagnostic tool if you're just trying to find out about spark sometimes. And also the, the Miata and a few other the project cars that I've had over the years still need the timing light, so it's always nice to have. And then I have uh, OBD2 to USB. This was for a failed attempt at uh, downloading some pirated Toyota software to work on the Tundra. It didn't work, but now I have that cable that might work for something else. The uh, Anova OBD2 scanner, I got that on Amazon. It wasn't terribly expensive. That's been a great tool, very useful. And then this is the VPeak uh, Bluetooth OBD2 scanner. This is fantastic. I usually can leave it plugged into a car if I need to pull codes, if I need to monitor what the computer is, is reading. This is a great thing to have and it links to the phone. And I also have a link to my tablet that I can uh, just keep in the car. Hot glue, solder, and heat gun. This is my soldering gun. Uh, as I've said in another video, I'm not any good at it, but I've got one and I keep trying. Hot glue gun, you'd be amazed how many things you use this for once you learn how to use it. Yes, I have my own hair dryer just for drying paint and, and simple things. This was like 15 bucks at Target. Again, don't steal your wife's or your mom's or your girlfriend's. Just get your own. Keep it in the toolbox. And the old tried and true Milwaukee heat gun. I've had this for many, many years and it is a fantastic tool. You need one if you're doing any sort of painting or any sort of work on stuff. I even use this. This gets so hot. I use this instead of a torch to release bushings when I was doing the subframe on the BMW bushings there. It, it gets hot. Awesome tool. The one with no label is where I keep my foam and crafting bits for doing uh, 
cosplay builds or toys. I built uh, the Heffalump balloon toy for my son. I'll cut in a little picture or clip of that so you can see what I'm talking about. So all of those kind of things, foam, uh, tongue depressors, empty glue bottles, stuff like that all lives in this drawer and then random big stuff it's just random big stuff that i don't have a good spot for this is a really deep drawer i really like it and i have some random deep stuff that needs to go in here besides the books uh breaker bar gas pipe there's some you know, bolt cutters in there uh, tree felling wedges uh hangers and it is what it is it's random big stuff that needs just needs a home and being in that drawer is so much better than just on a shelf or on the workbench taking up space this is my husky tool bench now this tool bench was kind of the i don't want to say catalyst main focus this was a big part of redoing the garage the last time I redid it I had this red toolbox and I kept all of my sockets uh, and various hand tools in these red totes the garage was completely different but I had them in these red totes and it just it was okay it was usable but it wasn't perfect and I really just wanted to start using good toolboxes to keep the tools from getting dirty and dusty and bugs flying in there and dying and all that kind of stuff so this is I sort of built it around this one I got it on sale uh, it was a good size it's got this nice wooden top on it um, and it's 18 inches deep all the toolboxes the big toolboxes are 18 inches deep and that was important for me because the shelves are also 18 inches deep so I have this nice clean line coming across so this is the one you've been waiting for this is the sockets again in here I have the Ernst this is a socket boss I think and this is just the regular socket organizers I don't do a whole lot with SAE or standard things anymore um, but I have a, a full set of quarter three-eighths and half inch I went through all of my sockets and a few socket sets and went through my dad's socket set and we sort of built this like here's a full collection of the sizes that you'll need and it lives right there and this is pretty cool too because these will uh it's hard to do one-handed but these will detach and you can pull that single rack out and take it with you if you're working another uh rail here with all of the extensions some are standard extensions some are wobble end extensions and then we have a uh, you know, universal joint and a, a wiggle adapter and all the way down to the size adapters these are pretty cool these are from Harbor Freight they were a stocking stuffer one year I think from my parents but they're nice just little handheld uh, ratchets and they if you just need to get into a tight spot or turn something easy these are handy and they you know they don't take up much space so they're nice to throw in your junkyard box or something like that another extension the ratchets, at least the half inch and the three eighths live over here. A couple of big ones. Now, I, I'm not super picky about my ratchets. Um, I've got a Stanley set. I've had this Stanley. Most of this is from the very first tool set that I ever got when I was, I don't know, 18. So that was 20 years ago. So yeah, this is a most of the Stanley stuff in here is 20 years old. It's still working great. It is held up really well. To a, a hard life and then I've supplemented it with some cobalt I found this 90 tooth yeah found this 90 tooth set on sale one day at Lowe's and added that in and then I have you know this flexi head Harbor Freight uh, I've got a half and a three-eighths and a quarter those are super useful as well the chemo power ratchet that was Christmas last year uh, again a super useful tool it has really helped my shoulder a lot it doesn't have a ton of breakaway strength but if you're just doing a real tedious job where you're turning the ratchet or things like that and especially if it's in a weird you know stretching your arm around articulated position if you can just get in there 
and hold that down and let this do the work oh that's so much better you, you'll learn when you get old like me and then i have this really long extension in the back that i used uh with like four others when doing the bell housing bolts on a gmc i've never used it since but it's a cool thing and you keep it around because when you need it you need it now the ernst socket boss these sets are so cool they're not terribly expensive i mean it does get into some some money when you are, are buying a bunch of them to do everything but you only buy it once they they feel really good they feel really solid they work really well again these rails can slide out so you can take the rail over to your uh, work card or whatever you're doing the stickers i love the stickers but they are stickers and you have to put each of them on individually so uh i spent uh a long time just taking a set of sockets into the house sitting down in front of the tv with my son and using tweezers and just putting on stickers but again it's kind of a one and done thing once you've got them in there you don't need to redo them some of them are kind of peeling up in a few spots but for the most part those stickers are staying on really well so quarter inch this all of this is metric over here and this is what most of my work deals with metric bolts and nuts so the, the socket boss has these little holders to hold ratchets and things too but I really only use it for the quarter inch and then I keep the flexi head 3 8 I have space for it on there but again quarter shallow and deep 3 8 shallow and deep and half inch shallow and then all the deep on there this is what I'm using 90% of the time if I'm doing any kind of job I'm coming to this drawer and I'm happy every single time I open it and it makes it so easy to put things back in an organized way because I need easy if it's a complex thing or a lot of steps involved to putting the tools away I won't do it and they'll just pile up and then I'll be unhappy next time we come down to wrenches wrenches metric more Ernst now these are the Ernst uh, wrench organizers I give them uh, 8 out of 10 uh, because they don't hold like I have this stubby 19 and there's like not a good way to keep it in order because of the flare on them but for the most part they're they're really good now these are uh, I keep my ratchety wrenches on this side I don't like to keep a lot of duplicate tools but metric wrenches again since most of the work I'm doing is metric sometimes you need two of each and so I keep that around also I try and keep several tins around and I don't know if you saw that up in the socket drawer real quick quarter inch 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 3 8 10 10 10 10 10 10 gotta keep them tins and SAE wrenches another Ernst organizer uh, you know I've got some old old school stuff in here too I mean sometimes you need them and and when you need them you need them so it's good to keep around but this is a I don't anticipate uh, filling out this set much more unusual and specialty sockets so driver set some of the big giant impact sockets that he use for like um, axle bolts and stuff I've got Allen head sockets SAE and metric E torques. Now these I could put on rails, but the boxes aren't big and they all fit in here. And sometimes you need to just grab and go. So I, I keep these in the blow molded packages. These are some of the random ones that I've got. Uh, you know, a long Allen head or a, a specialty torques. Just a few of these. Some of the spark plug sockets. I also keep the uh, those for the coil over uh, spanners. I guess. And then these crow's foot metric and SAE live down in there too. Allen wrenches and torques. Just a nice set here. A couple of uh, Swiss Army knife style ones. Have some torques and hex head. I like these ball end 
ones. This is the f I hadn't bought a nice set of uh, Allen wrenches before. I got these on a Christmas sale at Lowe's. I'm really happy about those. And then the long set of Torx. And again, on one of the Ernst socket rails, all the little stickers. And some of these are the tamper resistant long ones. Just, you know, on the Jeep and a few other things, they like to use torque bits for some reason and then got them all right. I apologize, there was a little hiccup there in recording. So, torque wrenches and breaker bars. Go ahead and say what you want about the quality of these. I don't use torque wrenches very often, and when I do, it's just like, you know, let's be perfectly honest close enough on it I'm not a professional mechanic I'm doing things at home and so far I haven't had any trouble out of any of these torque wrenches or anything that I've used them on having trouble down the road so I've got a half inch from Tecton that's the one that it gets used the most I've got this uh, 3 8 from gear drive which is a really pretty Let's see if I can get it open one-handed here this is a really pretty one look at that teal that's nice and then I've got the quarter inch Pittsburgh I've got this little uh, spinny boy here ask your grandpa how to use that and two breaker bars now oil change tools you know I've got the general oil filter sockets which are indispensable I've got this specialty one that is for the oil filter on the tundra I've got two of these this one is a, a locking pliers and this is a regular oil filter pliers I actually got both of these for doing the strut housing on a 911 SC uh, had twisted apart and they worked fantastic for that and now I just have them uh, in case I need them for oil filters I keep a couple of spare uh, plug washers around and then I got a deal on these on uh, eBay I think for uh, just keeping up with them when I do cars for the family uh, it's easier just to write that little bit and I've got these for uh, if I do timing belts keep track of them makes them look nice and it helps me remember when I did things the next drawer we're gonna look at here brake job tools so we've got the caliper winding tools I'm not gonna open this box up because every single time I do some of the pieces fall out but it's a good little tool when you need it you need it uh, the early version of those is this thing the Borg cube I got this at uh, Napa probably 15 years ago when I was doing uh, the rear brakes on my 240SX S13 240SX and this goes on the end of a 3 8 ratchet or a 3 8 extension and you use it pick which side you want twist it find a caliper in of course we have some old coat hanger for hanging calipers or whatever and then also I didn't know these were a thing until I saw them on TikTok. I think they are caliper hangers it's like 15 bucks for a pair they're fantastic buy those if you do break jobs uh, for your family or on your own or just just buy them the the squeezy tool here always useful love that tool that's not terribly expensive either none of my tools are really terribly expensive uh, I've got some spoon and this bad boy and this all for doing drum brakes on the Jeep and I don't do much with actual brake lines but I've got a hand bender and a little flaring tool and of course no brake job drawer is complete without the custom bent flare wrench there for that one specific job that you had to do that one time the next drawer we have is magic wizardry sorcery I don't enjoy working on air conditioners, but it is a necessary evil since we live in Alabama and it's 100 degrees all the time. So I've gotten better at it uh, just out of necessity, but I've got gauges, uh, vacuum pump, some Freon, the uh, 
your standard Walmart AutoZone Quick Connect setup there, and uh, another compressor pulley and press set there. And finally, in this box, my favorite label pullers, poppers, squeezers, etc. We have squeezers for coil springs, we have poppers for tie rod ends and pitman arms and ball joints. We have pullers, three jaw pullers, big three jaw pullers, little tiny three jaw pullers that I haven't even put together yet. And of course, this for pulling out CV axles or steering wheels or any number of things. Now, before we get into the Kennedy box, we'll just go over this section that we have up here. This is where I keep all of my C clamps and clampy clamps. You got your big sledge, little sledge, old nasty dead blow hammer, new dead blow hammer that I bought because I couldn't find this. And then when I got home with this, this showed back up. Rubber mallet, got your old grandpa ball peen hammer, baby grandpa ball peen hammer, or a, a little thwacker, as it were. Standard claw hammer. I've got a standard and metric adjustable wrench, trailer hitch wrench, this wonderful thing that I got for Christmas. To uh, This really helped me organize all of my nuts and bolts, and it's just a nerd thing to have. If you have nuts and bolts, you work on cars, you work on things, you want one of these. I also have a few extra of the uh, Ernst socket organizers. I bought a couple extra so that I not only had the, the racks for them, but also more of these little attachments if I needed them. And finally up here I have my uh, vintage uh, caliper. I don't have any use for this at all, but I saw it on eBay and I really wanted it, so I bought it. Now the last part we have to go over is the Kennedy box. I bought this on eBay. I needed one more small toolbox to finish storing things and I saw this when I was just looking at toolboxes and realized what I have are mechanics toolboxes but there are also machinists toolboxes which to my understanding just have smaller drawers for smaller things and I thought well that's perfect so I found this Kennedy 520 when I got it, it stank. It had the original felt inside and it was moldy and mildewy. So I pulled all of that out, cleaned it, put in, it's hard to see in this drawer, but I put in some more of the blue foam and it's fantastic. So in the top here is just measuring things. So got a square, speed square, measuring tape, stud finder, small level, Old school foldy out yardstick. The Harbor Freight digital caliper. The laser thermometer. Just various measury things. If we open that up, that usually just stays open. My uh, P Touch labels wouldn't stick to this because I had wiped it all down with WD 40 as part of the cleaning so I just wrote on it with the silver sharpie marker that cleans off really easy so we have get that out of the way we have tap and die sets uh, I pretty much just bought these as I needed them so there's no real uh, sequence or anything there and I've got some homemade thread chasers that I needed and punch and extractors and another little punch there Couple little uh, tire gauges. The mirror and magnets drawers. You got your little looky loo mirror here. You've got the extendable magnet. It sticks to everything because everything's metal. Uh, these are pretty cool. I got these on Amazon. They are flexi. So they don't really extend out. They are this length, but you can shape them to whatever shape you need to kind of reach around corners and get stuff. So those are pretty neat. Small files. I just got these in a 
a big set of used tools. Same story with the big files, but I do use these more often just for uh, kind of smoothing out if I cut metal or, or things like that or reaming out holes. I have a whetstone. I don't ever use it. And then in the last drawer, the wood rasp paddle bits and my uni bits. Love these. Love these. So there we go. I appreciate you guys watching through all of that. If you're still watching, thank you very much. If you haven't already, go ahead and click the subscribe button. I'll put the animation right there, maybe in that, this section. Uh, that would help me. At the time of this recording, we have 16 subscribers. Not 16,000, 16, 1, 6. Uh, but I would love for that to go up higher. And I think you would too, if we're honest with each other. Uh, hit the like button if you liked any part of this video that you saw and comment below if there's any uh, part of the toolbox or the tools that you have more questions about something you'd like to see or if you have uh, any insights into how you organized your tools uh, when I was building this setup and buying everything and figuring it all out I spent hours watching tool organization and toolbox tours and all that kind of stuff on YouTube uh, and I found it very beneficial, and so I just want to do that with mine to maybe help someone else. So thank you for watching. Look forward to next time. Bye-bye.